I'm Allison for Leading Edge Dog Show Academy. And today, as part of our anatomy series, we're going to go over the different parts of a dog's head. Um, so we're gonna go over the common terms, where they are, different things to look for. So obviously the dog's head is right here. And you know, they have a nose, they have an eye, they have two eyes, and what else do they have? So the front part of the face, right? So from the stop, so the stop is between the eyes. Um, and think of the stop as a good marker for the head. So from the stop forward, we call this the foreface. And from the stop back, typically this area is called the back skull. The back skull typically ends at this bone that sticks out called the occiput, the occipital bone. Um, but most people in dogs refer to it as the occiput. Um, again, we talked about the stop. We have the ear set, so that is where the ears are set on the dog. With most setters and spaniels, you want a nice low ear set. So a low ear set would be like below the corner of the eye. So there's the corner of the eye. Uh, when we're talking about the muzzle, the foreface is the muzzle. We also have the flu, right? So the flu is an important part. Some need a really tight lip. Some need a little bit more of a flu, such as we see on a lot of our sporting dogs. And when we're looking at the face in general, you know, you can see when they're talking about a balanced head, what they mean. Oftentimes a balanced head means the length between the stop and the occiput bone, and then the length between the stop and the nose. When we talk about planes, we talk about level planes, brick on brick type look would be this is one plane and then the top skull would be another plane. Now, you know, she would have level planes if she if she was groomed at this point. So when we talk about planes, these are the planes of the head. Then we kind of have the throat coming down here. Um, some people call this the dew flap in through here. And a lot of times we want this to be nice and tight. We like to hold that skin out of the way when we're showing off the face. Eye shape, when we're looking at the dogs, dogs have many different eye shapes. They can have an oval eye, they can have a round eye, they can have an almond, almost triangular eye. So that is the eye shape and where the eyes, hi honey, where the eyes are placed on our dog. So when you're looking at the head, you have to know that there's many different things that make up the head uh, make up what somebody might look at. So when somebody says to you, oh, that dog has a really nice head or that dog has not a very nice head, what really are they talking about, right? There are many different parts of a dog's head that make up whether that dog has a good head or not. One of the things that we like to talk about when we're looking at heads is also our dog's bite, right? So a lot of times if you can look at a breed, you can understand what kind of bite they might have just by looking at their head. So for instance, an English Cocker would have a scissors bite. And you know, when you pull back the flues, you can show off their scissors bite. When you look at a bulldog, you can tell by the shape of their face that that lower jaw, so the under jaw would be protruding. You can tell that that means that they probably have an undershot mouth or a reverse scissors. Um, you can see how nice and flat the end of her nose is. So that might be an indication that she does in fact have a scissors bite. So when you're looking at the head, there's many, many things to consider. When you look at um, her, sorry, when you look at her straight on, you can see that her ear set is nice and low, which we like to see in these setter spaniels, that her back skull looks quite even in relation to her foreface. And these are all things that you would be looking for when you are looking at the head. So when we're talking about the ear set, part of the ear is also the ear leather. So the ear leather is this, you know, the skin that holds onto the hair in, in a case of an English Cocker. Um, also, it would still be ear leather if it was a cropped breed, like a Doberman, that's still the ear leather. Although in a Doberman, we don't really talk about the ear leather because they have a cropped ear. Um, a lot of breeds, when they talk about length of ear leather, they like to go to the very end. So not the end of her coat, but the end of the leather. And they like to measure it compared to the length of the nose. So this might be something that is done in a lot of our hunting breeds. So um, we would do it like with our cockers, but we also do it with our poodles as well. We measure that ear leather length. 
Um, when we are thinking about the stop, right? So some standards are gonna call, call for a very pronounced stop. Some will call for a sliding stop, sometimes it's called, or they'll say little or no stop. So think of a collie that almost has like that exact wedged head. Um, think of a, a bull terrier that would have no stop, right? They have that egg shaped head. So even though we have many different sizes and shapes of heads, a lot of times they have the same features. Although, like we said, bull terrier, there would not be a stop, right? Because they would have that egg shaped head. Um, when we look at the back skull as well, you know, we like to see level planes on a lot of our sporting dogs. Um, a lot of our Asian dogs, when we talk about like a Lhasa compared to a Tibetan Terrier, how the shape of the back skull should be different, whether it goes wider at the occiput, whether it goes straight back. Um, so those are very, very important things. Also the shape of this back skull. So an English Cocker would have a flatter one, but an American Cocker, you kind of want that appley, that domed look. And with the American Cocker, you want that look, whether you're looking at them from the side or whether you're looking at them um, from the front, you would still want that domed kind of appley looking head. And remember that many of these things can be helped with your grooming as well. The same thing when we're talking about ear set, we can see on her, like here's the corner of her eye and the ear is set well below that. But on a Saluki, you want the ear set to be, be very high and mobile, right? So even though we talk about them as the same things, they could look very different breed to breed. And you know, it start with the jaw, even the nose, how wide, where the nose is set. Think of an Athen pincer where the nose is almost set all the way back here, right? So an Athen pincer has very little foreface. We probably don't even refer to it as a foreface. And they would have that more domed pronounced stop where you can put your whole thumb into the stop. So just because a dog's face shape is different and correct for that breed, doesn't mean that all breeds need to look the same. And then why is this important? Well, this is important because how are you going to show your dog in a breed specific manner depends on the structure of their entire body, their legs. But even if we just think of breed specific manners when we're showing off a dog like an English Cocker where, you know, we're very lucky with her. She has like these lovely lips and she has like hardly any extra skin here. Some sporting dogs would have extra skin here. And we would actually kind of pull that out of the way when we're showing our dogs and not want to show it. We're gonna keep this very tight. But if you were showing a bloodhound, you would want this to be more pronounced. You would want all of their wrinkling, et cetera, to be more pronounced. That's another thing. On the dog's face, they could also require wrinkling. When we talk about padding of the lips, with a sporting dog, you don't want a very thin lip. So, you know, on a Sheltie, you'd want a very thin, tight lip. Um, on a Collie, you'd want it. But on a sporting dog, we want this nice, thick, padded lip. Think about a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel where all the padding of the lip from the lip to right under the eye, you'd want that really thick padding. So when they say, is the face nicely padded? That's what we're talking about. Basically the thickness of this lip and the lip extending all the way up to underneath the eye in the case of like a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel or some of those more toy like Spaniels. When we talk about a little fox face, you talk about a Pomeranian, you're gonna want that shorter foreface, a more pronounced stop. Those ear sets, think of ears, you know, this is a drop ear. So we also have like on a whippet, we have like more of a um, button ear. On a bulldog, we might have a rose ear. On a terrier, we have um, a terrier type bent ear. We have that tr that fold in an ear like a Sheltie or a Collie. We have prick ear dogs. Think of a Norwich, a Pomeranian like we just saw. So where the ear set is, is very much going to differ from breed to breed, but it's still the same thing. It's where the ear is set on the dog's body. And that's what makes the differences between so many breeds of dogs is these little things, even though it's the same terminology, it can be in a completely different space. So I hope that that helps clear up some of the confusion about what the different parts of the face anatomy are called and how they can greatly differ perhaps more than any other part of the anatomy that we talk about on the things that make up a dog's head. So that's why we talk often about head type is really what makes type on a dog. Um, so the next time you're looking for a face or head anatomy on your dog, I hope that this tutorial helps. 
Thanks for watching today's video. Please leave us a comment below, let us know what you thought, and as well, if you have any ideas for future content that you'd like to see, you can put them down there as well. You can head over to leadingedgedogshowacademy.com where you can find our free, premium, and subscription content, and we'd love to have you join us there. As well, don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on those notifications, that way you never miss another free video tutorial. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.